Hi, my name is Cynthia Ma from Washington University in St. Louis, and thank you for dropping by. My poster is on inferring transcription factor activities and activity regulators from gene expression data with constraints from TF perturbation data. If there's any background knowledge that you feel like you're missing, please feel free to post a question and I will follow up as soon as I can. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and clarify that quantitative regulatory networks indicate the regulatory potential or control strength of transcription factors on their target gene. Whereas transcription factor activity is the extent to which a transcription factor is exerting its regulatory potential in any particular condition or time. Since many signals in biological systems are ultimately transduced by TF, their activity are key to modeling gene regulation. So how might we quantitatively infer and evaluate these regulatory networks and TF activity? And how might we analyze inferred activity to gain insight into biological systems? In order to guarantee we can objectively and systematically evaluate inferred activity levels, we define an activity inference and validation framework that starts with this box up here. This is the starting network that contains 50 transcription factors built with top ranked edges from CHIP-seq, differential expression after transcription factor perturbation, or PWM data. After the edges are selected, they're constrained as repressing or activating, either by correlating the expression level of transcription factors with their target gene, where a positive correlation indicates an activating relationship, or by looking at the expression level of a gene after TF perturbation, where a decrease in gene expression after a transcription factor deletion also indicates an activating relationship. Once these edges and relationships are defined, the model can be fitted, where gene expression data sets are matrix factorized into control strength value, activity value, and gene expression baseline values, which is simply the, the expression levels of genes in the absence of any transcription factor influence. Once all of these values are fitted, the control strength values are then passed down for a second round of fitting. In this second round of fitting, a new and independent gene expression data set is matrix factorized into this control strength set, as well as new activity values and new gene expression baseline values. These new activity values can then be objectively validated. The first accuracy metric is simply to check whether or not we've correctly inferred the activity level of a perturbed transcription factor to have changed in the correct direction relative to the wild type sample. In the second metric, transcription factors are ranked by their activity levels within a perturbed sample, and the performance of that sample is the rank of the true perturbed transcription factor. This rank is calculated for each individual sample, then we take the median and convert that into a percentile such that rank one is equal to 100%. Lastly, we calculate the correlation between transcription factor uh, gene expression levels and their inferred activity levels, where we expect positive correlations. These three accuracy metrics were then used to evaluate the results from using four different starting networks. All four outperformed random expectation, but chip PC in orange and DE PC in yellow clearly outperformed the other two networks. These two networks were then used to infer activity in new gene expression data sets, such as gene expression data sets where nutrient starved yeast cells were introduced to new growth medium with varying glucose concentrations, as well as gene expression data sets where genes other than transcription factors were perturbed. The activity patterns inferred from these gene expression data sets were then used to create this small regulatory system. To read this figure here, we have cyan circles that hold transcription factors. In this one, we have GCR2. Plotted within these cyan circles are inferred transcription factor activity levels from 0 to 300 minutes across these three different glucose concentrations. Coming off of these circles, we have these black boxes. Black boxes are defined as 
subsets of target genes that share the same go term as well as the same relationship with the transcription factor. So in this particular black box, we have four glycolysis genes that are all activated by GCR2. And plotted within the box is the average measured gene expression level for these genes in the three different glucose concentrations. And finally, we have these flattened hexagons that contain phosphatases and kinases. In this particular one, we have URE2, which has a dark red solid line coming off on the right that ends in a bar head. The bar head indicates a repressive relationship, whereas the dark solid red indicates that this inferred relationship can be confirmed using prior public literature. On the other hand, towards the left, we have a dark uh, dashed blue line that ends in an arrowhead. The arrowhead indicates an activating relationship, whereas the dark dashed blue indicates that this inferred relationship could not be confirmed with prior published literature and therefore could be a novel discovery. I'll wrap up my presentation here. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to post them. Thank you for your time.